So Lancelot Threckled was a missionary with the London Missionary Society and he came to the colony of Sydney and discovered that there had been no humanitarian efforts and no evangelistic efforts to reach, uh, to reach out to Aboriginal people. So he set up a mission uh, near Lake Macquarie for the Awabakal people and together with an Aboriginal man called Burban, they translated the Bible into the Awabakal language. The late 18th century was quite a difficult time in British history. Society is industrializing and therefore more people are moving to urban centers. Prisons overflowing, prostitution was absolutely rife, uh, drinking, gambling, there was a lot of immoral activity going on. While Britain still had an empire in North America, they transported people over there. But of course, Britain then fought the War of American Independence and lost the War of American Independence. And the government was kind of struggling to cope with the number of people that they were convicting of crimes. When Captain Cook discovered Australia, ah, the lights come on. Here we've got a new opportunity. We've got somewhere else that we can send our troublemakers. When the government decided to set up the penal colony in Botany Bay, they had no uh, idea of sending a chaplain. But it was when Wilberforce and his friends in the Clapham sect uh, heard about this, um, they, they thought, that can't happen without a minister to preach to them. And this was how it all started. The first fleet that set sail in 1787 was embarking on a grand experiment. Could convicted criminals become the foundation for a new outpost of the British Empire? The inclusion of a chaplain, as it turns out, is far more than an afterthought. The redemptive message of the gospel traveling to the far side of the planet would mark a pivotal moment in history. What they've discovered about the, the first convicts is that one should not romanticize what they were like. They were for the most part petty thieves. They were totally unchurched as far as we know. And Richard Johnson, the chaplain, ministered to them. But the very fact that a British preacher was now on the other side of the world preaching the gospel in the Southern Hemisphere for the first time was thrilling to British people. And it started to fill their heads with ideas of what could now be achieved. The flame of missionary zeal had been lit. The end of the 18th century saw the establishment of the interdenominational LMS, the London Missionary Society, and the CMS, the Church Missionary Society among many others. Church Missionary Society was uh, the brainchild of the Clapham sect. John Venn, who was a preacher in this church in Clapham here, and William Wilberforce, who also lived in Clapham. The missionaries that went out there were just thoroughly ordinary people. They generally uh, weren't ministers, they weren't trained, they weren't educated, they were shoemakers joiners, carpenters, people who had trades in England who just believed that they were called and they did it. They did it without qualifications, they did it without training, they just went and did it. And through them, Christ changed the world through his gospel. But nobody said changing the world would be easy. Back in New South Wales, the colony that would become Australia, the chaplains faced what was called hell on earth. It was what it was, it was a penal colony. These were convicts, these were prisoners, and this was a distant jail on the other side of the world. Drunkenness was rife, prostitution was rife, uh, people were being daily hung on the gallows, whipped and so on. It was a frightening and horrifying place, I suppose. Richard Johnson and Samuel Marsden and the other early chaplains were army chaplains and their main role when they first came was to provide a church for the military and for the convicts who compulsorily had to go to church. Samuel Marsden was a chaplain there for 45 years. 
uh, and it was a very difficult situation. So to be able to survive that long uh, testifies to his strengths. But his strengths were accompanied by very significant weaknesses. When Marston tried to deal with the Indigenous people of Australia, he couldn't understand they didn't want what he felt he had to offer. They didn't want to become like him. They certainly didn't want to live in a house or farm. In fact, they pitied the Europeans for their hard work. They didn't want to have to till the soil. And he felt that until that was developed within them, that sense of what he called civilization, they couldn't understand the gospel. The Aborigines are the most degraded of the human race. The time is not yet arrived for them to receive the great blessing of civilization and the knowledge of Christianity. So before Europeans arrived here, we had hundreds and hundreds of, of nations, of tribes, of, of people groups who lived in a, a kinship relationship with each other. They lived in a relationship to the country and in a way that saw themselves uh, custodians of creation. British colonisation was devastating for Indigenous people. Um, pe people refer to it as an invasion. The colonisers brought disease, there were massacres, people were forced off their lands and this destroyed whole communities. There is um, harm and, and, and uh, hatred, but there's also an element of hope and of healing. And what often doesn't get talked about is the fact that there's an advocacy of early Christians up until their voice, we were not regarded as, uh, as, as people. We were regarded as one of the lower forms of, of humanity. So Lancelot Threckled was a missionary with the London Missionary Society and he came to the colony of Sydney and discovered that there had been no humanitarian efforts and no evangelistic efforts to reach, uh, to reach out to Aboriginal people. So he set up a mission uh, near Lake Macquarie for the Awabakal people and together with an Aboriginal man called Burban, they translated the Bible into the Awabakal language. 